Hello, my name is Bill Scott. I am on the Board of Directors of the Arizona Center for Disability Law. I'm here today to talk about the Americans with Disabilities Act, especially the part applying to employment and employment-related issues. The Americans with Disabilities Act is a comprehensive federal law that protects people with disabilities from discrimination in public accommodations, public transportation, telecommunications, state and local governmental programs and services, and employment. This presentation will focus on how the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA, protects people with disabilities. This video presentation will cover what an employer must do to comply with the ADA, such as proper hiring procedures, providing reasonable accommodations, and making non-discriminatory decisions about firing employees. Private employers must abide by the ADA. State or local governmental employers must also follow the ADA even if the public employer has fewer than 15 employees. If an individual works for or applies for work with the federal government, the Americans with Disabilities Act does not apply. Another law does protect the federal employee or applicant with a disability. The ADA protects otherwise qualified individuals with a disability from discrimination in employment. A disability is a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits the person in one or more major life activities. Physical impairments may be physical conditions such as amputations, blindness, or diabetes, as well as mental impairments from mental retardation to depression. Only a few specific conditions are excluded under the ADA. A person currently misusing drugs is not protected by the ADA, although persons in drug treatment and rehabilitation would be covered by the ADA. An impairment is not a disability unless it substantially limits a person's ability to perform at least one major life activity. Major life activities are the activities that people do throughout the day. Major life activities include caring for oneself, performing manual tasks, walking, seeing, hearing, speaking, breathing, learning, lifting, standing, and working. Some courts have found that the ability to produce children is a major life activity. Even if an individual does not have a disability, he or she may be protected in another way. Discrimination because of a history of a disability or a perception of a disability violates the ADA. For example, if an employer learns that a job applicant was hospitalized for depression a year ago and does not hire the person for that reason, the applicant is protected even if she is not currently affected by the depression. If an employer knows that an employee is gay and mistakenly assumes that the individual has AIDS and fires him because of that, the employee is protected. The ADA controls what an employer may ask an applicant before the employer makes a job offer. The ADA covers applications, interviews, reference checks, job-related tests, and medical examinations. Before the ADA, an employer could ask any question about whether an applicant had a disability, the type of disability, and how it affected the applicant, as well as the severity of the disability. These questions did not violate the law. Now the employer may not ask those questions before a job offer is made. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Hi, can I help you? Yes, I'm here for the secretary's position advertised in yesterday's paper. Oh, okay. I need you to fill out this application, and can you bring it back when you're done? Okay, thank you. Thank you. An employer violates the ADA simply by asking the type of question, do you have AIDS? How many days were you sick last year? Have you ever filed for workers' compensation? Have you ever been injured on the job? How much alcohol do you drink each week? Have you ever been treated for alcohol problems? Have you been treated for drug addiction within the last five years? An employer may ask questions about whether the applicant can perform the job duties. The following questions do not violate the ADA. 
Please describe or demonstrate how you would perform these functions with or without reasonable accommodations. Can you meet the attendance requirements of this job? How many days did you take leave last year? Do you illegally use drugs? Do you have the required licenses to perform this job? Ms. Meyer, this is Tanya Gallegos. He's here for an interview. Hi, Tanya. Nice to meet you. Please have a seat. Thank you. Yeah, I have a resume for you. Thanks. Here's a description of the position for you to look over. Okay, thank you. Do you think you can perform the duties listed here? Yes, I've worked as a secretary for two... This question is almost legal. An employer must ask whether the individual can perform the duties with or without reasonable accommodations. Remember that the ADA protects people with disabilities who are qualified for the job. An individual with a disability is otherwise qualified if she or he has the skills, education, and experience required for the job and can perform the essential functions of the job with or without reasonable accommodation. If an employer only asks whether the applicant can perform the job, without including the words with or without a reasonable accommodation, the applicant may describe a disability and any accommodation he or she needs before she is offered the job. Ms. Mayer should have asked, Do you think you can perform the job duties listed here with or without reasonable accommodations? Yes, I've worked for two insurance adjusters previously, and I've done filing, answering phones, um, answering questions, basic questions from customers for them. Good. We depend upon our secretarial staff to be here most of the time. Uh, the company does offer four weeks of paid leave, which you can use as vacation time, sick time, or personal days. We would expect you to be able to meet these attendance requirements. Would that be any problem for you? No, no problem at all. I noticed on your resume that there was a one-year break in your employment. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Um, yes, I had some medical problems, but they have now been resolved. Could you tell me a little more about those problems? I don't feel comfortable doing so. A question about an interruption in an applicant's job history does not violate the ADA because it is not designed, nor is it likely, that information will be obtained about a disability. There may be other reasons that a person has a gap in their employment history, such as family obligations, returning to school or a training program, pregnancy and a childbirth, or travel. Once an inquiry does bring out information about a condition or disability, an employer cannot ask follow-up questions about the disability. When Ms. Mayer asked the applicant to explain her medical problems prior to making an offer of employment, she violated the ADA. Ms. Mayer gets another chance to comply with the law. I noticed on your resume that there was a one-year break in your employment. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, I had um, some medical problems, but they've now been resolved. Do you have any experience working specifically for mail order companies? No, but I've had about four years of experience in customer service types of positions. Great. Well, thanks for your time. We're going to be checking references before we make any decisions, but we hope to be making a hiring decision in about a week. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. Okay. Mr. Previn, hi. My name is Marilyn Mayer, and I just had an interview with a Tanya Gallego. Yes, she applied for a position as secretary with our company, and she had listed you as a reference. Well, why, why I was calling actually is that she had mentioned she had some medical problems before she started working for you, and I wondered if you had any more details about that. 